Lucent lesions are a common finding in x-rays of the jaw. Today, let us try to understand the pathology behind the three lucent lesions. Next time we encounter these, hopefully the name will spark clues to our differentials. An understanding of these terms and how they can explain the location and appearance of lesions requires a short review of the embryology. Unerupted teeth look like these in x-rays. So where do teeth come from? Teeth come from two tissues, one is from the oral ectoderm. The thickening of the ectoderm forms the dental lamina. The dental lamina combines with cells from the neural crest to form a tooth bud. The dental lamina contributes to formation of the enamel precursors and then regresses. We can therefore say that the tooth comes from two origins. One comes from the ectoderm, drawn here in white. The second is derived from the neural crest, drawn here in yellow. Why is this important? This can explain the histology of odontogenic keratocysts. Odontogenic keratocysts have a cyst wall of parakeratinized squamous cells, which is not surprising given its origin from the oral ectoderm. Now to give us a general view on the cells of origin of the common mandibular cysts, let us name their cell of origin and their location. Ameloblasts come from the enamel organ. Ameloblasts give us enamel, drawn here in the erupted tooth in violet. Cells from the dental papilla give us the dentin and pulp. While cells from the dental follicle give us the periodontal ligament, alveolar bone and cementum. Another important role of the dental follicle is for tooth eruption. The dental follicle cells use the gubernaculum as a guide to migrate to the correct occlusion plane. One can imagine that this job would require it to remodel portion of the bone. This process is important for understanding the appearance of a dentigerous cyst. Cells here highlighted in pink have an important job to accomplish tooth eruption. This job is to allow migration towards the occlusion plane. This growth pattern is the attempted pattern by abnormal dental follicle cells in the dentigerous cysts. So now let's review the three jaw radiographs we saw in the beginning of this talk. The first case is a lucency in the root. This starts as an infection in the tooth from caries. When the infection reaches the deeper structures, there will be pulp necrosis. This results to spread of infection around the root of the tooth. Due to its location, this is also known as the periapical cyst. Radicula means root in Latin, hence, this lesion is called the radicular cyst. Now moving on to our next lesion. It clearly is a tooth-bearing lucent lesion, hence the name dentigerous cyst. Now why are dentigerous cysts associated with non-erupted teeth? Let's take a closer look. We see here a non-erupted tooth. To erupt, cells of the dental follicle must be able to migrate towards the occlusion plane. The occlusion plane is towards this direction. This pattern of the cyst base on the cementoenamel junction is characteristic of the dentigerous cyst. One way to remember this is to think that the dental follicle cells are trying to do its job to erupt the teeth, hence, the expansal growth. Going back to our sample case. The cyst wall converges at the cementoenamel junction, drawn in green. Next time we hear dentigerous, think of a lucent lesion, which bears a tooth. Moving on to the last lesion. It looks quite similar with the previous one, due to a pericornal location. However, this lesion grows more parallel in the medullary cavity of the bone. In contrast, look at the growth pattern of the previous lesion. This lucent lesion, which grows along the medullary cavity of the bone, is the odontogenic keratocyst. The culprit cells of the odontogenic keratocyst appears much earlier in the tooth development. Shown here is the bud stage, which happens in utero. This appearance early in development can be guessed from the word odontogenic in its name. Keratocyst refers to its keratin layer, which we saw earlier. One can understand why this lesion can be seen in the pericornal location. Look at this example, the lucency is near the crown. In this case, the pericornal location and associated unerupted tooth mimics a dentigerous cyst. However, a clue to look for is the growth plane. An odontogenic keratocyst grows along the length of the bone within the medullary space. In contrast, a dentigerous cyst is more expansive, perpendicular, to the length of the bone. 
Also, a dentigerous cyst has a characteristic convergence with the cemento-enamel junction. So today, we saw three differentials of lucent lesions of the jaw. A knowledge of the development of the tooth can help us understand the appearance and the name of the lesions. A lucent lesion in the root or apex of the tooth is likely due to necrosis in the pulp. Because radicula means root, this lesion is called a radicular cyst. A lucent lesion in the pericornal region with cyst convergence in the cemento-enamel junction of an unerupted tooth is more likely to be due to failure of dental follicle cells. This is called a follicular cyst or a tooth-bearing cyst or dentigerous cyst. Lastly, abnormality in the early development of the tooth related to the dental lamina will more likely grow along the medullary cavity. If associated with an unerupted tooth, will also be in the pericornal plane. This is the odontogenic keratocyst. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.